how's it going? My name is Phyllis and I paint as a hobby. In fact, I'm going back to grad school next week and it's in a subject as far from art as possible. So I'm savoring the last few days with my paints. Do you remember reading tales like Peter the Rabbit or watch shows like Max and Ruby? Somehow as my art evolved, I've ended up with this semi-illustrative whimsical and dreamy style. I think it's reminiscent of a storybook and it's just like the ones I've mentioned. And this is exactly what I want to teach you today in this video. So first let's talk materials. You'll need some sort of watercolor palette. I'm using Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set, which allows me to establish this color scheme for today's painting. Then the pens that I'm using are the Sakura Sigma Micron pens in the size 0.1, 0.5, 1, and the brush tip. Before anything gets on your page, let me quickly show you how to draw animals from a reference image. So the keyword here is circles. I'm gonna show you how I map through the features, starting with its head. I then move on to its chest, its hindquarters, and the legs. Notice how I allow the circles to overlap to match the outer contours of the bunny. The circles should only help you outline the edge of the bunny. Lastly, I do the ears, but I split it between the top and bottom half. Now with a heavier hand, I trace the outline of the bunny, the circles help me determine correct proportions, so all I have to do now is shape it into what I think it's supposed to look like. Here's another example of the process. This time I'm drawing a cat, and to make it a little bit trickier, the cat is going to be laying down in a strange contortion, just in regular cat fashion. You'll see that this assortment of circles and ovals amount to nothing discernible, but that really isn't the point. When I zoom into the muzzle, I draw perpendicular and horizontal vertical lines. This helps me determine where to place the cat's facial features. I then outline the cat with darker strokes and maybe include some shadows, which will help me in the inking process. My last example is of a dog, and I'm just going to speed through this one because you've already seen the process using circles as a proportion guide already a whole bunch of times. This method is really useful when drawing animals in atypical positions. The cat was a really great example of that, but also this dog. I know the title says to paint animals like a storybook, but really to achieve that effect it's all about the line work. The first thing to note is where is the sun shining from? For this bunny, the sun is shining from the top left, therefore the darkest shadow will be on the bottom right. Just think what's complete opposite of it. And I'm using the brush tip pen to fill in the darkest shadow. For the bunny, that will be the bottom half of the chest, behind the legs, under the chin, and between the ears. So next I'm moving on to using the 0.5 pen tip to work on outlines. If you look really closely, you'll see that I don't actually outline with purely straight lines. I add variation where the fur is more pronounced and that means drawing small, imperfect horizontal lines with gaps in between. The storybook effect is all about variance. I believe that excluding symmetry and consistent patterns adds to the effect. To add mid-tone shadows, use parallel lines. I'd explain this in another video, but placing parallel lines next to a filled shadow helps create gradients. Lastly, I'm just inking in some small details like its eyes, nose, and ears. With just a few small steps, you can achieve a bunny that looks like this. I'm following these same tips with the cat. The light is coming from the top right, and therefore I'm inking in the shadows on the bottom left. This includes the bottom of the chin, in between the paws, below the tail, and the hindquarters, and certain parts of the ears. After that, it's just a matter of determining the midtones and the details. You can totally use these steps to draw animals in basically any style, but really it's the parallel lines, the variation in fur, and the general messiness of it all that creates the whimsical storybook effect. And also the watercolor, also the watercolor techniques, which I'll explain later on. Lastly, I'm just gonna do a quick inking of the dog. Um, I'm just doing another speed through because we've seen it a few times. And although the shadows are hitting it from the top, I'm still inking in the ears as if it's in the shadow, but simply because it has, it just has black ears. 
The step doesn't really have to be for just darker shadows, I just said that at first to make things simpler, but use the ink to color in what appears darkest on an animal. The last step of the storybook process is watercolor. Remember when I decided on the watercolor palette already? I made swatches of it on the side of the sketchbook because I want to stick to this palette to make everything cohesive. Start with the ground shadows. I avoid using pure black for these kind of shadows. Try like gray or dark blue. My favorite mixture is brown and blue. Next, I start layering shadows on the subject. The inking prior really helps us figure out where those are. And I add a light wash of brown gray in those areas, but I'm keeping it light so it's layerable. Also remember, watercolors dry lighter than the initial application. So if you're intimidated by watercolors, just know it's a little more forgiving than you think. Uh, we really pride watercolors for being fluid and you know allowing the water to make shapes that we don't necessarily expect, but sometimes we kind of get overboard with thinking that watercolor is like completely uncontrollable. I don't actually think that's true. For the bunny, I'm only really using two colors and that's the gray brown and the pink. All I'm doing is layering some saturated versions of these colors on top of each other. You can really see it in the bunny's fur. I'm going back in with the gray slash brown to enhance some shadows around the muzzle and the chest. I'm zooming into the painting to show you how I add details. Using a small brush, I add strokes suggesting shadows in his fur. And really with a few colors, I can achieve this storybook look in just 10 minutes. And this is how the bunny turned out. The cat is even easier. Again, I'm only using two colors, which is this burnt orange and a gray for shading. I even leave the lightest part of the cat pure white, or basically the color of the paper. I add saturation where the ink shadows merge with the watercolor shadows, and then with a final wash of gray for the contrast. Here's a quick speed through for the dog. Hopefully you can once again see these steps in action. Sometimes shadows and outlines can get lost with darker colors, which is not a problem. Just go back in with a thick pen. And that's really all to it. My paintings wouldn't be my painting if not for a little bit of gold ink. This is totally optional. I just feel like if someone illustrated my life, I'd want all the events to be linked with gold ink. Can't really explain it, it just makes it feel like a fairy tale. I know my titles say storybook art, but I just want it to be known that I've never written or illustrated a storybook. It's simply a title that I put on my art style. I think someone commented that my art looked like a storybook, then I just took that as the highest form of compliments and went from there. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned a few things, and if not, enjoyed some of my painting process.